Hey now, everyone, before we get into this review and breakdown of Bad Batch Season 3, Episode 10 and 11, Identity Crisis and Point of No Return, a spoiler warning spoilers. Fans have been pining for a legit check-in with the Imperial side of things in this final season of Bad Batch, and boy oh boy did this week's double drop pay off in dark and evil spades with Identity Crisis and Point of No Return. The deep dive into the current state of Tantus was a treat that not only shed more light on Palpatine's Project Necromancer and how freaking evil it truly is, but it also started to reveal a bit more insights into the mysterious Dr. Carr and how she will inevitably be involved in saving Omega and further sabotaging Project Necromancer. Her chat with Nala Say was illuminating in that it hinted at her past with Nala and how she felt discarded, but it also teased that Nala believes Emery does indeed have the power to save Omega, whether it be physical through their shared DNA or literal through her actions to subvert Hemlock's plans. Our Order 99 prediction is looking even better after this check-in with Dr. Carr, so hopefully the trauma she's witnessing being inflicted on children and eventually Omega flips her switch fully to start waking the other controlled clones for a full-on revolt. Oh, I almost forgot that the opening episode also reminded everyone of how damn cheap Tarkin is because he's now going after Necromancer after proclaiming the Empire needed conscripted soldiers because clones cost too much. Can someone remind this guy that he's in an Empire that can do whatever it wants please? Either way, watching top level Imperials have pissing matches never gets old, so another nice touch this week. Clone X also returned in grand fashion, and he continues to be one of this season's most intriguing mysteries. We got to see the chambers he and the other operatives get healed or brainwashed in, and if you look closely, you can see they have different armor designs and loadouts. One could argue that these may indeed be Gen Zero Dark Troopers, but regardless, they're definitely much different than other clones and may each have specialized purposes. Our Clone X, though, continued to show just how special ops brilliant he is th with a masterful infiltration of Pabu and then his absolutely brutal execution of the Empire's search for Omega. I still hope he's Cody because I think that hits the hardest narratively. It doesn't cheapen Tech's death and it gives fans closure on the longest known named clone in the franchise. A clone of Crosshair wouldn't upset me either, but the Cody thing would be a massive gut punch, so fingers crossed. As much as the Pabu thread may have put some fans off earlier, the second episode did a fantastic job of making us feel awful about it being discovered and essentially destroyed by the Empire. It finally served a strong narrative purpose that will give the Batch an even greater resolve to do what's right at all costs. Omega giving herself up isn't surprising at all, but how she will be found again adds a new wrinkle to this season's narrative. Poor Crosshair is still failing at every turn, but this latest miss ensures his highly emotional sacrifice to undo all of his perceived wrongs and missteps. I'm guessing fans felt worse for Crosshair and the clones than they did for Omega, because the fallout from the Pabu attack and Omega's capture will undoubtedly lead to some highly emotional moments as the boys do everything in their power to finish this fight and save their sister. Alright, top moments time. Let's start with the reveal of the Project Necromancer Vault. Holy crap! We all know the Empire is beyond evil, but seeing how they use bounty hunters like Cad Bane to kidnap force-laden children from their parents, only to be locked up in a prison for experimentation, is a new form of bad, bad. The fact that Hemlock prefers kids because they're less resistant and comply better is as sick as it gets and shows that he may be just as heinous as Palpatine himself. The vault scene also telegraphed to fans that it will be the thing that finally breaks Dr. Carr of her blind obedience to Hemlock. I have to go with the Tarkin check-in next, mostly for the fact that it was so Tarkin it couldn't be more Tarkin. The snooty attitude, the condescending tone, all of the horrible tendencies of this evil man were on display, and he perfectly reminded everyone as to why he gained so much power under Palp's empire. Plus, it never gets old watching him talk crack to his allies without actually talking crap. Up next is an emotional one, at least for me, and that's the scene between Omega and Liana when she leaves Tex Glasses and Lula in the Pabu Relic Room. Man, that action just hit me, especially seeing her with Tex Glasses. 
Thank goodness she did choose to leave these important items to Clone Force 99, because if she did not, they too would have perished in the death of the Marauder. And finally, I'm jo just going to go with witnessing the Empire's brutality on Pabu. It was brilliantly dark and a perfect showcase of how awful the Empire was and what it would do to any system any time it had an interest in its resources or actual citizens that live there. Without notice, Pabu had a destroyer in its skies, a battalion of clones and TKs in their streets, and a clone ex-psycho super warrior terrorizing its citizens. The Empire was so awful they forced Omega to turn herself over to stop the literal bleeding of the town. And while her doing so isn't surprising, I think we predicted as much on the Star Wars Time show, but seeing the horrific actions play out just expertly hammered home how horrendous the Empire is. Eggs and references time. All right, starting with a brain dead one in the return of Cad and Toto, who were both voiced by their respective actors in Corey Burton and Seth Green. How about Scorch finally being called Scorch in this series? Small, but big, I guess. And I don't care about Delta's heroics at this point. Scorch needs to die a terrible death or have one hell of a redemption save because he's possibly more evil than Clone X. We got a Sid reference from Mr. X, so hopefully he killed her for that intel, because now she's responsible for the destruction of Pabu and Omega having to give herself up and being captured again. Steve Blum, aka Zeb from Rebels, did some voice work in this double drop as a citizen and a stormtrooper. Fee mentioned Ando Prime, which is a planet first featured in the Pod Racer game, and she also mentioned Scar and All, which is the planet from season two of Bad Batch that she sends the Batch to, and they get trapped in a tomb. And finally, Matt Lanter, aka Animated Anakin, voiced this fueling droid. Hey, if you like this type of breakdown, make sure to sub to the Star Wars Time Show on YouTube, socials, and podcast platforms. There's always time for Star Wars Time, and don't forget, if you listen to the Star Wars Time Show, the Force will be with you, always. Always.